All right, good morning, afternoon or evening everyone. Today I'm going to be covering a different type of video than I normally do cover. I'm going to be reviewing my car. Yes, this is my real life car, not a ship today or a tank. We're going to be covering a real life car. Yes, this is my personal car. I use this every single day. Um, it's only three months old, but I really wanted to make a review on it. And I made a poll. I'll show you the result of the poll shortly. Um, but yeah, I made a poll and most of you, 75% around out of a thousand votes voted I should make a review on it. So here it is. This is what it looks like. It's a little blue Volkswagen Polo R-Line. It's a 2022 model. It's a brand new model and I love it. And I'm going to just talk about it and show you a drive. I'm going to take you on a drive as well around uh, two villages around Malta and well, show you around and the car, show you some engine noises, whatever, and the boot space, etc. So here's the interior of the car. Um, well, I'm not going to show you, but the, the camera quality might not be the best, it's shot on my phone, but there you go, this is what it looks like, there's the air conditioning, there's a steering wheel, the dashboard, pretty cool, um, leather and plastic mostly, the, the steering wheel is actually leather, and so is the um, gear shift and the handbrake, but I believe everything else is hard plastic, I think, and of course, pretty nice interior in my opinion i have fun just sitting in there to be honest quite cozy i'm sorry my t carpets are pretty dirty dude but malta is pretty dusty i must say especially in winter um, when it does rain normally it is dirty rain indeed but this is pretty much the interior of course looks quite nice we have all the pedals you need the steering wheel and this is the interior on the back here as you can see, it looks like it's a little bit of space, but last time I actually fit four people in the whole car. So me, obviously, someone in the front passenger seat, and then two people. I don't know how the guy fit, but he said he fit comfortably. And I asked him, I asked him, hey man, don't you want the seat to be moved forward? He's like, no, this is perfect. I'm like, okay, I guess. So he did fit quite fine. Um, obviously, you can move it forward and backward regardless, but quite nice interior space on the back. Very easy to fit people, which is super nice. You can also fold the seats down for extra boot space. But speaking about the boot, and this is the boot. So the boot has apparently 351 liters of boot space. So you have quite a lot of space. I haven't really needed any more space, so it's quite good. Here's the tire, the spare tire. It comes with the car. Um, but yeah, you get some boot space here. Pretty good. Honestly, pretty, pretty enough boot space. You can fit a luggage or two in there, shopping, anything really. I just keep my basketball in the back normally, but I cleared it out. You do get a spare wheel, of course, quite important, just in case you do get an incident on the road, which is, luckily I haven't had any incidents yet. Um, fingers crossed I won't have any incidents. But yeah, here it is. Um, we can look around it, I guess. This is a more mm, nighttime-ish with the lights on. As you can see, the front lights. I'll show them to you a bit better um, shortly. But here are the rear lights of the car. Uh, quite nice. They did change the lights completely on the Polo compared to the last model. And this is a completely new, I believe, just visually. It's a it's a facelift, I think they called it. It looks different than the old one, but pretty much underneath, it's pretty much the exact same model. But on top, it does look different. Here you have some R-Line spoiler and stuff and some skirts or whatever. Quite nice car, the blue. I, I wanted it actually in, in dark gray, but like a like a, a met dark metal gray, but I like the blue, I have to say. Do let me know what you think of the blue, if you would prefer a gray or something. But here are the fr here's the front light here. Looks gorgeous at night. Honestly, even even later at night, it, it looks quite incredible actually. Like, I mean, it's just full light bar up front. I think they do the same on the Golf, but now they're doing it on the Polo, which is pretty cool. So I'm quite happy with this. So here I'm going to start the car so you can kind of hear the engine sound. But let me be quiet for a second. Quite a ca quiet car, honestly. But that's kind of how I like it, to be honest. I don't really want a loud machine. I just kind of like it just to go from A to B in a way. But very wonderful interior indeed. Here, by the way, we're at uh, Ta'ali, which was the old World War II airfield. Um, I'm going to be driving around shortly here and just showing you around. And of course, I will be talking about how much kilometers I have on it and how much it basically costs me to, to use it and stuff. But here we are. So this is going to be like almost a point of view drive. I put a camera up to my, my window here on the right. 
I stuck a camera to the window. It's actually my phone camera. Let me know if the quality is okay or not in the comments. Should be quite decent. Anyway, so this is um, Ta'ali Airfield here. It used to be a World War II runway. It's where um, basically the British stationed all their uh, Spitfires and stuff and hurricanes back in World War II. Uh, but now it's more of a fun activity area where you can either drive around or go to see some football as you can see by the football stadiums But yeah, anyway, so Honestly, so so far I've driven the car in three or four months. I think I got it in around August I've driven it, driven it around 3,500 kilometers at uh, seven like Seven liters per 100 kilometer that would be around 13.7 kilometers per liter or for the UK It's 38 miles per UK gallon or for the you Americans who are watching 32 miles per gallon for you US Individuals and the fuel price in Malta is 134 euro per liter and that's the unleaded fuel is according to the European standard specification EN 228 and has an octane number of 95 that costs 134 per liter um, which totals around so me total I've spent around 340 euros on fuel over four months um, which <laughs> around per price per kilometer I don't know why I did this but <laughs> I just wanted to let you know the price per kilometer of driving this thing in Malta is around 10 cents per kilometer so it, I mean it's it's not cheap but 10 cents per kilometer isn't something like too crazy to be honest that's of course doesn't take into account insurance costs which is quite expensive for me since i'm only 21 years old and of course we have um a license and etc but here we're going up this hill up to a village called imtarfa which also used to be a british area where the british used to stay world war ii um but yeah i'm as you can see on the right i'm gonna show you the car a bit here again on a loop around just so if you missed it before you can watch it again um but yeah so going up this hill honestly so far over the four months of driving it it has felt pretty cool i like the car i mean i haven't driven a lot of cars before um except for i guess my instructor's car which was an old toyota vitz or yaris i think that was quite miserable though i ha i have to say but this is I mean, it's a brand new car, right? So it's super smooth, super easy to drive. It's a manual. I'll talk about the, the statistics of the engine just shortly um, and the top speed, etc. Which, honestly, I can't top speed it out, guys. The, you know, the country doesn't allow that because, well, the roads aren't too massive. There, there are some pretty good roads, honestly, um, which I don't think I show in this video too well because I don't, <laughs> I don't go through those roads. Um, but there are some nice roads for sure, but most of them are... Uh, lathered or just thrown around with speed cameras pretty much everywhere anyway so over here we're in Imtarfa which like I said used to be a British British village but now it's pretty much Maltese completely now since the British left a long time ago and we're going to go round here go round this part I'm using a time-lapse system I'm trying my best I hope the time-lapse looks decent um, I tried to doing it in the video editing software looks pretty good but here we're going to um, up towards Imdina, which is built by the Arabs. I don't actually know what year, but quite a long time ago indeed. So anyway, um, going up this across this bridge here, this bridge. So I just want to let you know, this bridge used to be um, a railway or where the train used to pass back in the 1930s. It, it didn't actually pass over the bridge, but it stopped on the bridge and this over here this building right here with the red door That's a train station. It used to take you to the capital city, which is quite a far uh, quite a long ways away It's across the island. So there used to be a train passing through here It used to pass under Imdina, which is the walled city in front of us um, So we're going up this hill Honestly having a nice car in a uh, sorry a, a small car in an, in an island like Malta is quite a good thing to be honest as well <laughs> It's just it just lets you go through these roads super easily and fast. Well, not that fast, but you don't want to crash into a wall or something. But it allows you to drive pretty much anywhere, find parking anywhere. I have the sensors front and back with rear camera and everything. So it's super easy to drive. Now this these walls are of the city of Imdina here. Um, we're going to be going around it. You can't really go driving inside it unless you're a resident. I'm not a resident of Imdina, so I can't really go inside it by driving but I can drive you around the walls down here so we're gonna fling right into this narrow tunnel but we're going to wait for the man who's coming out because we won't both fit inside this one tunnel 
it is quite a narrow tunnel but this car can fit in it quite easily oh my god the light is so bright <laughs> but anyway so this is Rabat here this is Rabat um, which is the basically the suburbs of Medina but now it's a bigger town of course and this isn't the fortified area this is right outside and um, if you ever come to Malta this is a wonderful place to come it's a wonderful village and um, Rabat and Medina are both very wonderful to visit um, but now we're caught behind the bus so anyway so for its statistics by the way it has 95 brake horsepower with 175 newton meters of torque and it's a front wheel drive car with a five speed manual gearbox yes i am driving a manual gearbox imagine um, its top speed is around 187 kilometers an hour i saw a video on youtube of a man clapping 196 kilometers an hour but that was on the autobahn um, so we're, we don't have an autobahn in Malta so I can't really flat out you know try 196 kilometers an hour in my polo but there it is um, 196 you can do it if you're crazy unless you live in Germany then you can do it whenever you want its acceleration from 0 to 100 is around 11 seconds by the way for those of you wondering um, me I've actually never tried doing it 0 to 100. I have gotten over 100, but I can't go too much into detail of that for obvious reasons. So, we're going to be going back down the hill from Rabat. We're going to be going back to Ta'ali. I'm basically going to do a full lap here for you guys and just show you some scenery as well as, of course, reviewing the car. Um, otherwise, um, overall, this has been a wonderful car to drive so far. Four months with it incredible relaxing i use it every day to go to university of course as you guys know i'm a university student so i use it every day and it gets me home in time to stream and make youtube videos for you guys every single day so it pretty much is super fun and um, to even go out with friends with um i've driven my friends with it all the time basically once a week we go out with friends we go out to like visits and stuff to different places and well of course, this is our main driving vehicle. Anyway, otherwise, I mean, congrats Volkswagen. I mean, you made a pretty good car. I mean, no one would, was probably surprised that it is a good car. Um, for me, I have driven some other vehicles, like I said. Um, some pretty good cars as well, um, such as BMWs, etc. Obviously, they're higher-end stuff, but those aren't mine. So, this is actually my car. So, I'm quite happy about it. And I must say, I'm quite happy about owning such a wonderful vehicle. Um, but apart from that, that's pretty much our drive around Ta'ali, Imtarfa, Rabat, and Imdina. And we are going to park right here and talk just a bit more about the video, I guess. Um, but anyway, so about the car, it's pretty good. Overall, definitely recommended. Um, I know you guys are like, why did you make a review on it? Well, I made a poll for you guys. I'm just going to relink it here. Thank you guys for voting for it. Honestly, so the reason I wanted to make a review on my car um, is because I want to look at this video in around a year or two and be like, hey, you know, or like five years and be like, whoa, that was my, you know, you know, that's when I got my car. I'll probably still be with the same car in like five years, even eight years, probably. That's the goal, at least, at least, right? Um, I would look at this video again and be like, wow, you know, that's that's when I had it brand new, basically, you know, etc, etc. And, you know, I would love to see what you guys think about my car. Um, give it a rating or something. Let me know if I should have gotten any other options or not. I didn't get any extra options. Um, I will list the options again available here. Um, most of this list that I'm showing right now is the ones that uh, you get with the car stock with the R-Line package, but then you have the extras on the bottom right, the little square. Let me know what extras you would have gotten, if any, if you actually had gotten this car, and let me know what you think. Um, of course, you have to keep in mind it is a small car for a small country, but you have to keep in mind Malta even though you guys think it's small, it's actually in reality not that small. Remember, we, our drive here around pretty much two villages, which is only a super small portion of the island, took us around 20 minutes. And that obviously I time-lapsed it and made it super fast for you guys. But in reality, Malta is way bigger. You have to keep in mind Malta is also a hilly island. On the north as well, where some of my friends live, it's, it's quite hilly and it's not really easy to get around. Public transport is also not 
a an easy thing to, to take hold of, um, especially since most of the time buses are full and then they skip your stop, etc. But in this case, you know, it just makes life super easy to be able to just go out whenever you want and be able to get to your destination at a reasonable amount of time. So I'm quite happy about owning a, a car like this. And But that's pretty much it for the video, guys. Please do let me know what you thought of my car um, or in general. If you have any further questions, I will try my best to answer them in the comments below. Um, and, of course, if you enjoyed the video, please do leave a like, a sub, potentially. We're approaching, slowly approaching 10,000 subscribers. And we should be getting there potentially by the end of the year. Um, right now, of course, it's 2022. I'm recording this video. And that's pretty much it um, overall. So, yeah, like I said, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And big fan.